Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Charlie Pankey again with Sierra Right Now Podcast. We thank you for joining us wherever you're at today. We do hope the Sierra is in, at least in your sight, or if not in your near future, uh, here in fall 2024. Uh, I've got glasses on today because the pollen's killing my eyes, and uh, it's it's allergy season for me, and I love to hike. Uh, but we have a great guest with you today. We're going to be talking about ski season coming up. Uh, so if you're ready to get uh, the binders all tightened around your feet and jump in the powder and have a good day on the mountain, this show is probably for you. Uh, before we get started, we can't do anything without our sponsors. So please uh, um, uh, take a look at this video from Carson Valley, uh, our sponsors for today's show, our home base for all the adventures we have in the Sierra. It's a great time to visit the Carson Valley, all the fall colors, the golf season. It's just a great time to be in the valley. So take a look at this and we'll go from there. If I can play it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> We love that. We love the well, guys. One of the things I love to do is just roam the mountains all winter long. I, you know, I'm a big snowshoer. I'm not a skier, so uh, a lot of times when I'm talking ski, it's really kind of this novice approach. So I'm super excited today to have our guest, uh, Patrick Lacey. He's the HR director uh, up at Palisades Tahoe, and uh, we're excited to have him today to talk about uh, all things uh, anniversary and just a great skiing experience on the mountain. Patrick, how are you doing today? We're, we're doing great, Charlie, and uh, just to correct you, it's, it's a PR manager. <laughs> no, if, if, it was, if, it was, if it was HR, I'd probably be, you know, I, I, would, I would add a zero to my paycheck towards I, the end. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate PR director. That's why I have you on the show. I wouldn't want to talk to HR director. <laughs> well, Patrick, it's great to have you here. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I was super excited to see an uh, email from you what, about a month ago that this is your guys' 75th anniversary at Palisades Tahoe. Uh, so some pretty exciting things coming up for you guys this year. Yeah, so I mean, that is correct. Our 75th anniversary, I mean, from having, you know, we were we were founded in uh, November 24th, 1949. And I mean, that is 75 years right there from post the 1960 Winter Olympics uh, to, you know, connecting uh, Alpine to Palisades through our base-to-base -base gondola. Uh, we also had a Jerry Garcia concert. I mean, we've had a lot of history at this place. And, uh, you know, now with our 75th anniversary, we're, we're, we're looking really for it. And, you know, and we're also looking uh, forward to the next 75 years as well here at this beautiful mountain. And, you know, our really, our motto here is to, sh uh, to, to, to really, we, we just, we share the spirit of these legendary mountains with the world. Um, and, you know, I, I can't stress that enough because uh, this is just a huge milestone for us. And we're excited to celebrate, you know, our past as well as where we are looking forward to the future. That's awesome. You, you think about it, you, 49, 49. I mean, the road networks were, you know, archaic in our terms nowadays, right? You're in the, the Sierra back there and snow. I, I don't know what the record snowfall on Palisades is. It's got to be what, 600, 800 inches, something like that. I mean, it's, it's insane snow pack. You have this bowl, this like perfect bowl to catch the whole community in uh, that you drive into. I, I just can't imagine what it looked like in 49. And then to think that it was only 10 years later, you guys hosted an Olympics. That's, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, this mountain was pretty much built for the Olympics. I mean, there were a few lifts right there in 1949. But uh, really, once we uh, had the Olympics, that's whenever we really, really took off as a mountain and just be and became an international destination uh, for skiers and now snowboarders. You know, I mean, it's, it really wasn't that much uh, that long ago that we added snowboarders to the mix, really. Right. Uh, and we were actually one of the first, too. So uh, okay. it's pretty cool to, cool to say that. <laughs> Yeah, that's where that is. I didn't know that history. Um, were you not to bring up competitors by any means of the show, but were you guys the first ski resort in this area, or is there is there a is a local ski resort like your number two, or do you guys know that history? You know, I'm not really sure about the history, but I definitely do know that we were one of the first. I think it kind of started down in Southern California and kind of worked its way up. Um, and uh, but yeah, we were one of the first, definitely in the basin. I know since I've been doing this here, we've covered a couple of 50th. That's what I'm saying. You guys must be fairly, fairly close to one of the oldest uh, and beginning uh, uh, resorts. So, well, I know that, again, I've, you know this about me. I'm not a skier. I've been to your 
resort multiple <laughs> times to cover media events, and I'm, I'm probably the least ski guy that's ever walked the mountain with you guys. Uh, but I do enjoy the snow and getting out there, so it's such a beautiful scene. Um, what what if would you say, I know the gondola chair to chair, that's got to be a pr- pretty big on the list. What would you say the biggest change in 75 years that a mountain is, is – as seen as far as a ski industry. I mean, it's a big, big period, I know, but can you kind of yeah. pick one or two that, that this would probably be a big moment in history? Definitely. You know, I think, you know, with our lift infrastructure, just, just you know, as is uh, from, you know, having a Funatel uh, and a gondola and a tram, you know, that's what really sets us apart. We're more of, you know, it, you know a lot of people will compare us to more of a European resort. Uh, just because we actually are the only ski resort in North America that has a Funatel. And if you don't know what a Funatel is, it's a it's, it's more of a it's a larger gondola that can fit up to 28 people inside of it. And it will it's on two cables uh, running up the hill so we can make we can really operate this during high wind loads. Uh, and, it, you know, it does get, you know, fairly windy up there, especially since we're located on the, on the Sierra Crest. But uh, knowing that, we also get a lot more snow, too. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, really the Funatel uh, is kind of what sets us apart from, you know, other resorts and just the base-to-base gondola. You know, with the base-to-base gondola, you can share uh, 6,000 – we, we have 6,000 skiable acres – for our guests, you know, it does. You can't ski this whole mountain just in one day. It takes multiple days to ski uh, all of all of our runs, uh, and it's just we're we're located in two zip codes even. Uh, oh, really? and, yeah, yeah. Now that we connected uh, through the base to base, uh, yeah, we're located in two zip codes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and just, it's just a massive feat of engineering and just see where, uh, you know, where we kind of started and where we've came is just absolutely huge, uh, from, you know, just kind of harping on the 75th anniversary. Uh, but, uh, the base to base gondola, uh, it's one of the only ones in the U S that we can, we can either run it as one, uh, complete lift, or we can run it as two separate lifts. So let's say uh, you know we uh, we don't want to run it from the Alpine to uh, to the KT terminal. We can run it as uh, we can run it as two separate lifts and or just okay. one continuous, um, and that equals uh, 43 different 43 lifts that we have here at Palisades Tahoe. We have the most wow. uphill. That is correct, and we also have the most uphill capacity out of any resort in North America. That's fantastic. I, did, I didn't, didn't know that either about you guys. I, I obviously, you're a, a crowd favorite of, of <laughs> many guests in the Tahoe area. That's uh, that's fantastic. And, and with the 43 three lifts, maybe you would know this. Like I know you guys have everything from the beginner bunny slopes right there, you know, at the resort to you know, we call it double black diamonds or whatever. Uh-huh. What, what's like your mix for beginning family, like moderate skiers to the you guys that are jumping off the the rocks and that building their own trails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, Charlie. So uh, we have, uh, we actually, our mountain is kind of different. So a lot of our uh, learning and beginner terrain is up at the top of our mountain. So, and you can take the tram to access that. So you can experience the beautiful views of Palisades Tahoe. Uh, and you can even see the lake from up there uh, whenever you're learning how to ski. So really our, our more steeper terrain is actually more at the base of our mountain. Um, and we also do have some learning terrain uh, with our mountain sports school at the very base. Um, but we also have a lot of learning terrain up top too. Uh, and that's, that's what really sets us apart from, you know, uh, you know, we, we do have a very wide variety of, uh, from beginners to super, super advanced technical skiers. Um, and, you know, we're, we're also one of the biggest feeders to the uh, U.S. ski team as well as the Olympic team. So, uh, yeah, we really love building Olympians out here at Palisades Tahoe. Yeah, I want to talk about the Olympics and the, and the World Cup stuff here in a few moments. Let me go back to that real quick, though. One of the things that's really caught my attention when I come out to Palisades for, you know, pictures and, and just kind of see the events and stuff is that it never feels – too busy at the at the base lodge area and so that must be why because you have an upper mountain that has so many options do people just they spend all day at upper mountain and you only come down when they're ready to go home type thing or, or do you find you know people have f- favorite sections of the mountain they'll, they'll ski there all day and you won't see them until it's time to go home is that 
De definitely. And it always just depends, you know, what day it is. If it's a powder day, uh, you know, a lot of people want to go out back to Silverado and ski there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's just some great, great uh, terrain back there. Uh, but, you know, once again, we do have 6,000 skiable acres, so we can really spread uh, people out, uh, whether that's, you know, going, you know, on the very, very far, uh, far east side of Alpine and then to the furthest west side of, of Palisades. Uh, okay. And yeah, and, you know, just once again, so yeah, we're, we are one resort, but we are Palisades Tahoe and we have Palisades and then we have Alpine. Yep, exactly. I think that's probably a learning curve for many people. A lot of people know Alpine from and and you know what used to be Squaw, now Palisades. That that branding what's been about mm -hmm. seven years now. You guys changed that branding, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's still probably a learning curve. People saying Palisades Tahoe and understand that is one resort. That's pretty cool. So, well, exactly. let's talk about let's talk about World Cup and Olympics just for a moment since, we, since you brought it up because those are the two big events. I know that I've spent the whole day up there in the ski community. Uh, and one of the things I love about the World Cup when you guys have the events is that it does bring the world to Palisades. And I, I've i never belonged to a community like the ski, ski community. I, I, they're so friendly and so open. They're, 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 it's all about having fun. How did Palisades get started? You know, I don't know if you know the legacy of the, of the Olympics, but why, why Palisades for the U.S. Olympic team and the World Cup? Explain to me where Palisades kind of fits in that world picture, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So uh, whenever it was, you know, 1949, this goes back to, you know, Alex Cushing times. Uh, and, you know, he was the really, he, he was the one that really spearheaded getting the Olympics out here and, you know, and trying, try, really, really trying, you know, they, they really didn't think that they were going to get, get the bid for the Olympics. Uh, but uh, sure enough, they actually did get it. And it was to really drive tourism to the state of California, as well as the high Sierras. Uh, and uh, just, I mean, that being said, uh, you know, it, it, to, 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 uh, from where we started to where we came, you know, that was a huge feat. Uh, and really the, the 1960 Olympics has really built this place to what it is uh, to this day, just the history. But we've also added on so, so much more uh, beyond that as well. I do love that you guys, you know, keep up with the history though. Like I just saw uh, in your announcement that you guys have re refurbished the torch area. Is that correct uh, for the 75th anniversary? Yeah, that is correct. Actually on my way uh, to work today, uh, they, it was great. They were putting all the different countries emblems up uh, and yeah, and it does say, you know, home of the 1960 winter, uh, winter Olympics, uh, you know, in, in the, in the past, it only said, you know, uh, international destination. Uh, so we're really uh, grateful to use uh, that the, the IOC, you know, they, they really kind of, uh, uh, you, you can't use Olympics very often, but uh, within this realm, you, uh, we, we got permission from the IOC. And so we're really, really stoked about using that. Uh, and just, yeah, really just re refurbishing and know, keeping our history true to what it is. Great. So uh, is there a picture spot now where people can pull off and get a picture? And <laughs> that is yeah no that that is correct exactly I mean that that is one of the must spots if you do come to the come to Olympic Valley you must take a photo right there that's an absolute must and then also just near our Funatel is a great uh, great spot there uh, that says home of the 1960 Winter Olympics as well absolutely yeah and that what's the peak that that Funatel goes up on I I, I don't know the peaks very well or runs. So the Funatel, the Funatel actually goes up to our mid, like our mid mountain. Mid -mountain. Um, so it doesn't go up to an exact peak. Um, but uh, once again, you can reach multiple different peaks uh, through the Funatel. Uh, and we do have eight different peaks here at Palisades Tahoe. Uh, okay. That is correct. Yeah. So uh, yeah, then once again, just, just so much history here. Uh, and that we can kind of count on. And, you know, it's not just our 75th anniversary. It's even uh, Warren Miller Entertainment history, our uh, 75th anniversary as well. Uh, and we're actually featured in that film uh, this year. And it features some of our, you know, top athletes such as Darren Ralves, Connery Lundane, uh, and, and some of our ski team as well. Uh, that's going to take place actually November 1st here at Palisades Tahoe and Olympic Valley Events Center. Uh, so if you want to, uh, you know, watch uh, the Warren Miller ski film this year, definitely come out for that. 
uh, November 1st. Uh, we can't, can't wait for that event to happen. That's, that's fantastic. I, I might have to put that on my calendar too. Just again, the ski community is so fun to be around. I, I imagine those film fests are just a, a, a complete ball. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. So, very good. Yeah. And so what, what else is uh, event wise can, um, uh, you know, fans expect or skiers expect this year at the resort? You got anything new? Uh, is there a world cup coming back? Um, so this year there, wise? yeah. So this year there's not a world cup coming back. Uh, we did, we have hosted it two years in a row. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the, the national championships are actually going to take place in sun Valley this year. Uh, so they decided to not come to here uh, for a stop. But uh, we do hope to get it again in the future. Um, we are we are we're already looking, planning ahead for that. <laughs> right. um, but now regarding just new events, uh, we do have Tahoe Live, which is more of a uh, an EDM festival as well as you know there's some R and B uh, artists. So we do have uh, Lil Wayne coming as well as Diplo. He's more of EDM dubstep. Uh, you know he's really known for you know, playing over at. Uh, Oh, uh, just, just multiple different music festivals around the world. Um, and, and just kind of in our backyard here and, and or over in Reno as well. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, and then, uh, you, you've got events coming up. You've got, you do have a celebration for the 75th or a day that it's going to be like 75th anniversary day on the mountain. Yeah, so we do have, so all of our events are going to be kind of tied to our 75th anniversary, okay. but we do have our opening day. Uh, which is scheduled for November 27th. Uh, there, we are offering $75 lift tickets for our opening day. So this will be a really kind of a great way to kind of ring in the the, the new ski season. Um, and uh, and once again, uh, this is definitely a, a, as cheap as lift tickets get. $75. Uh, make sure to come out for that, uh, and uh, we'll do some unveiling of a few things. And we can't, we just can't wait to have this. Uh, just to start this beautiful season uh, here in in the Sierras. Very good. All right, so I do have one one uh, technical question to ask you. Ask you. Last year, you guys introduced uh, the new parking structure, right? <laughs> so because crowds are crowds, and getting to the mountains always always a big deal. From uh, from a standpoint outside the mountain, and actually somebody who used the bus system to get there for the World Cup, because I had to test it out, right? Uh, I thought it it looked like it was going pretty well. I was wondering maybe if you could do kind of a quick review of what you guys saw last year experience wise. And then if you guys, you know, listened to your constituents and made changes this year at all, or any advancements that you want to kind of talk about. Park, parking. Definitely. So last year, you know, was our very first year of rolling out the parking program. And, uh, you know, it is, a, it is a reservation based parking program. We do reserve half of it to be uh, more than half of it to be free. And then the rest is going to be, you know, either. Yeah, yeah it's to be paid. Um, and it's going to be $30 uh, this season uh, for the for weekends and holiday periods periods only. Right. So midweek, okay. you're fine to come. We want people up here midweek uh, skiing and riding as much as possible. Um, but but during those uh, holiday periods as well as weekends, uh, we did have to do something. You know, yeah. uh, we got a lot of you know feedback from our community that they can't even get out uh, get out and go to the grocery store. You know, yeah. simple tasks like that. So you know, it's a big community initiative uh, to to roll out. But uh, you know, it was very very successful. Uh, but we did we have learned a lot, and you know, we have corrected a few mistakes uh, in the past uh, to make this program run much smoothly. Uh, it's going to run pretty much the exact same way as it did uh, did last year. Uh, so uh, reservations are going to be uh, released uh, at on Tuesday, the prior before uh, the weekend. So it's at 7 a.m. or uh, sorry, it's at uh, uh, 7 and so, no, sorry, it's 12 o'clock p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, that's that's whenever you can get those res snag those reservations, those free reservations. And if you don't get one of those, uh, we do offer paid parking. But honestly, don't worry about that even because we have multiple other ways to get to the resort. Uh, we have Mountaineer. We have Tart. We have Tart Connect. Uh, there's just multiple different ways to get to the resort um, and, you know, definitely use that alternative transportation uh, and get, yeah, and save, save, save a few, uh, few a few dollars on gas money. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to give a little testimony and a little shout out to Tart. So I had never used that system and last year world cup, you guys mm -hmm. gave us media guys plenty ahead of time when we could have parking, but you could encourage us to use alternative transportation. So I took an opportunity to go, okay, how hard is this? Right. So, I drove mm -hmm. up Tahoe City. They have a huge parking lot right there. I was able to grab the, the tarp. I was in the resort in 
10 minutes, you know, front door delivery, basically, right, right to the resort, resort. Stayed there all day long, took photos, stayed for the concert that night. And then, you know, just to be honest, I don't know how to read a bus schedule. So I didn't realize that the bus didn't pick me up. So I had to call the Tart Connect who came and picked me up. But so I stayed for about a half hour because I was waiting for a bus. There was no bus. But, you know, that's because I stayed all day long. And so mm-hmm. when it was it was easy to call Tart Connect. They were there in 10 minutes. I was back in my car in like seven. Uh, so right, right. A fantastic way to get to resort, in my opinion, based on being there before with the long line of trucks and cars and then trying to figure out where to park in the parking lot. Right. So I, I, I and the other thing I know in our area, in the Tahoe Basin, you're not the only ones that have a parking system where it seems like everybody's kind of gone that direction because we are doing a great job of coming to fantastic ski areas in the, in, in the Sierra. Uh, and so you're right. You guys had to do something, especially you guys have that unique challenge. You're in that bowl, right? There's one way right. in one way out. You guys don't have multiple functions. So uh, I, 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 I encourage people to use the transportation system. The TART system is extremely good. Haven't used Mountaineer. Is that Mountaineer a, a private company that does that? What, can you, maybe, do you know anything about them? Yeah. yeah. So Mountaineer is a private company. So we actually hire them out to, uh, to do all of our, uh, to sh- uh, sh- shuttle people in to Palisades Tahoe. And it, it, it goes through the, the, the valley. So it's, okay. it's Alpine Meadows as well as the Olympic Valley. Uh, now it is pretty much free Uber. Uh, so it's like Tart Connect and and uh, yeah, so it's pretty much Tart Connect and, and Mountaineer are very similar, um, and that's actually what inspired uh, Tart Connect to uh, to do this program. Uh, so Mountaineer was actually here before Tart Connect was oh, even a good. thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think I saw and their shuttle last year actually. I just didn't know who they were. So <laughs> right, right, right. And once again, like all of these uh, uh, transportation options are absolutely free. Uh, you know, there, there's there's no there's no cost associated with them. Um, besides just hopping and hopping on and or or scheduling uh, the, a, a pickup, uh, and that that's all it is. Yep. You know, it's yep. it's super simple to do. And so let's help our guests. A lot of our listeners and readers are, are from the Bay Area, Sacramento, San Francisco. They're coming up to the mountains. Mm-hmm. And so if they're coming up for a weekend and, and uh, whether they're staying at a resort or or they're just coming up maybe even for a day from Sacramento, they do that all the time. The the transportation systems go all the way to Truckee. So they can, they can hop on a Truckee. They go all the way to Incline Village uh, on the north side. I'm not sure how far down on the west side they actually go. Um but is there like is there a way for someone to stay in South Shore and get all the way around the lake yet, or do they have to get to the North Shore to catch the lake? Do you know? So they would have to get to the North Shore or, or Truckee uh, to uh, to get here by public transit. Um, yeah, that that's one thing you know that we're kind of still kind of working out, and I think you know that's more of a whole lake initiative. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so uh, yeah, it's just kind of like connecting connecting the bike path, you know, around the lake and stuff like that. <laughs> cool. But uh, once again, that's a huge area that to uh, to cover from Truckee all the way, you know, to the pretty much east side of Incline Village. Yep, very good. Okay, Patrick, we talked a lot of details and stuff, but you guys are skiers. And I know skiers want to talk about snow. Uh, you are a skier. I see a snowboard behind you. I imagine you're a skier, correct? I'm a, I'm a skier and I do a little bit of snowboarding. <laughs> okay, very good. So talk to me about the snow, uh, you know, expectations for this year. Like what's the best run on Palisades for powder? What's the best run every day of the week? Give me some <laughs> personal opinion on, on the mountain here so people can, you know, kind of like fishermen, where's the secret hole at, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Of course. Uh, so, I mean, uh, just, just within the past year, we've invested, you know, $1.4 million in upgrading our snowmaking operation. Wow. Uh, and so this includes investment in like a booster pump that improves like water transfer uh, of snowmaking equipment across the entire resort, um, as well as, uh, you know, we've added additional fan guns at Gold Coast uh, and we built some snow walls to helping, you know, retain the snow rather than the snow just kind of blowing off into somewhere that we can't ski. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into, uh, you know, uh, producing snow in the summertime. <laughs> it's out like producing. Yeah. So there's a lot of work that happens in the summertime so we can have multiple, like we, so we can have a good amount of snow in the winter. Um, but additionally, you know, we've, in, uh, constructed loading ramps, 
uh, over on our Scott chair, Red Dog and Resort chair. Uh, this really kind of improves the amount of snow that it will take to, to build the ramps um, and you know, just using that snow more efficiently. Uh, we also have uh, some new Piston Bully Snowcats that are equipped with LiDAR technology. Um, so they're using lasers to see the different snow depth uh, uh, where they're grooming, right? And we can push the snow where if it's a little bit more in some spots and it's a little bit lower in a few, uh, they can push that snow over to those spots and kind of fill them in. That way we can have a consistent snow throughout the year uh, and making it, uh, making it, yeah, making it, extending the, for a longer season. Uh, we are the spring skiing. Yeah, I mean, shoot, it was two years ago. We were skiing all the way up until the 4th of July. <laughs> and uh, we do, yeah, we do pride ourselves on staying open, uh, like uh, usually up until Memorial Day, uh, depending on the year, obviously. You're, you're uh, almost always the last ski resort in our area, at least open right that, you and mammoth you and mammoth going head to head with who's going to stay up the longest right so that is correct that is correct yes yes oh, yes no, you <laughs> a trophy you pass around on there, yeah. so, right that, <laughs> I, I we probably should do that <laughs> probably should It'd be a lot of fun. yeah all right so how about you what's what's the what's the uh guests coming from out of town what run do they not want to miss on palisades if they're going to be here this is their first weekend out and they know how to ski mm -hmm. what's the one not to miss you know, my one of my favorites is going to be Wolverine Bowl. Uh, now that's over at Alpine. Uh, I just love to just you can get some good speed. It's great if it's also uh, super uh, just super powdery and buttery and smooth. Um, but also, you know, in the springtime, it gets really nice corn snow. Uh, and if you don't know what corn snow is, it's like the freezing and thawing cycle. Uh, but, you know, over there is just, I mean, fabulous. Like, it, you, you can't go wrong. It stays, uh, it stays pretty long throughout the year. Uh, so, yeah, you don't really have to worry about, uh, you know, variable snow conditions over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just, it, it, yeah, that, that's one of my favorite areas to ski. Perfect. And then let's, how about a, a great powder day? You, you, you mentioned earlier and I didn't catch on, but yeah, you have a great powder day. Where do the power hounds have to? Where, where's the must uh, powder feel that? So, I mean, I'm going to definitely sound a little stereotypical, but uh, KT22, anything off of KT22 uh, is just absolutely fabulous. Uh, you can't really go wrong there every single run, uh, but definitely be an expert skier. Uh, and uh, kind of stay shy of that if you're not, uh, but uh, <laughs> especially on a powder day, but, you know, make sure you, you know, you carry your beacon, probe and shovel, uh, you know, just in case if, if there would be, you know, a possible slide. But uh, obviously, you know, that's my absolute worst nightmare as a PR uh, professional. Yeah. So uh, yeah, once again, fun. safety is our number one uh, priority here at Palisades Tahoe. But uh, the KT terrain on powder day, fabulous. Very cool. Uh, you know, it, how about uh, what, what kind of uh, secret gems does Palisade have that you think guests miss out on most? Like, what are what's the thing that you think this is like the best thing ever, and just not enough people take it take advantage of it? What, what would be that at Palisades? Man, oh man, that's that that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I really like uh, you know, it's not it's kind of known, but uh, if you it you know this terrain doesn't open too often, and if it does, it's open for just about a month. Um, but our Silverado terrain, uh, is, you know, that's going to be on our pretty much far Eastern and sorry, far, yeah, far East end of the, the resort. And, uh, really it's just, I mean, there's just multiple different, just, uh, pillow stashes out there of snow. Uh, and, uh, once again, you know, we don't really open it too often. We open it a little bit later in the year. Um, but over there is just, you can get some great powder. Uh, if you like to send it off some cliffs or like go off, uh, some pretty gnarly terrain, that's the yeah. spot for sure. That's the spot. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. For sure. There's a good <laughs> well, Hey, you're not going to believe this, but we're already up on our half hour. Uh, it, it, we, it just flies by. There's so many things we could talk about. Maybe you and I can do a, a mid season, one of these and, and get some people to update once we get some serious snow on the ground. Uh, but I end my show every every time with three questions, personal questions for you, uh, since we are a recreational show. They're the same three questions for everybody, so I'll keep them pretty simple. Are you, know, you good for that? Let's do it. All right, very good. Okay, so long day of skiing. You're on the mountain. Uh, I'm a big food junkie, right? So what is the uh, go-to meal that you have to have after a long day of skiing? 
It doesn't have to be at Palisades. It could be anywhere. But like, what is it? Like, I'm a burger guy. What's what's the go definitely? <laughs> well, you know, you you just took it out of my yeah uh, yeah. It it would have to be Rocker. You go to Rocker, grab a Rocker burger. Good vibes. Uh, great. You get you have a beautiful patio over there. Uh, grab a beer as well. And I mean, you're you're, you're living life. It's very good. Rocker is it. Okay. All right. Opening day, 2024. Okay, you're, you're gonna ruin it for you, I know. So you you can lie if you want to here. So, but uh, you grab it. You have somehow have the day off. Okay, and they're gonna let you go skiing. What's the first run you're going on? What's the run that you can't miss your first day on the road? Oh man, I would probably assume there's snow everywhere. Okay, assume there's snow everywhere. <laughs> perfect, perfect. There's snow everywhere. Oh man, I'm probably gonna be definitely hitting the Palisades. Palisades is where it's at. I mean, that's our name, Palisades Tahoe. And right there, the Palisades, on, yeah, it's just, I mean, you you can't go wrong with that. Either there or, uh, I mean, KT on a powder day, like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Okay, very good. All right, and final one, uh, I'm a little bit, gear, a little bit of a gearhead, and I'm not sure about skiers and how you guys are with gear, but what what gear is always with you? It's always in your pack or you're always, to, every, anytime you hit the mountain, you just don't leave home with this piece of gear. What's, like, your go-to piece of gear? Oh, man. My go-to piece of gear would probably be, so uh, we have this place called Wildflower, right, here in the village, and they make some of the best cookies, right? Wow. So, you you know, you got to save a pocket cookie, right? Pocket and, cookie. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, whenever you get hungry on the lift, definitely get a Wildflower uh, cookie uh, and save it for later. And, uh, yeah, you, yeah you're, you're, you're riding pretty good if you have that pocket cookie. Patrick, you're, my, you're my kind of guy. I like that. The wildflower <laughs> cookie. Next time I'm up there, I'm trying one. I haven't done that. So that's it. Wildflower cookie, writing that down. So, hey, that is fantastic. Uh, if you're listening to this today and you're listening to the show, uh, Patrick, thank you for being here first. Uh, we are looking forward to the 75th anniversary of Palisades. You guys have been such a great uh, historical piece to our region in the Sierra. Uh, we know skiers love you guys uh, as, as a place to be. So, uh, join them for their 75th anniversary. It looks like they're going to have some great events coming up. Uh, we'll have a story here uh, shortly with this video on it with all the all the details of their upcoming year. And then uh, we'll also have them in our, our November issue. We're going to do a little history piece on the 75th anniversary and some Olympic stuff. So uh, we'll be getting back with Patrick on that. Uh, we do look forward to bringing this to you. Hope that you will join us next week on our show. Uh, Patrick. Have a great 75th. Hope you get some great powder days up there and get some time off to go skiing yourself. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Everywhere you're at today, wherever you're driving, drive safe. Uh, if you're listening from home, we hope the Sierra's in your future. Uh, come up and see us this winter. Uh, ski season starts November 27th at Palisades. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Oops, stop.